Hello. Oh, hello, everybody. Jason beat me to the hello, even though he's not in control of this stream. I, he knows I the timing by now. I don't know if I should say now. hello first or not. There's always an awkward little <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> thing at the beginning of each stream. I thought I'd jump in. No, it's good there. timing because it just like it just about like transitions over in time for that. So, yeah, you're you're more on the ball than I am. <laughs> Uh, welcome everybody to this weekend stream. I should probably bring up the mod chat so I can actually see like mm -hmm. the chat. <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no cuddly character behind you today. Oh no, there's not. There's um, there's it's a lot of like. Time. Oh no, actually, there's a box stacked up. There's a lot like, of um, like, it's not there's boxes on boxes <laughs> and bubble wrap. <laughs> That's what I've got. Let me see if I can find a treasure. Hold on. I don't have many treasures left um, in the apartment, but maybe I can find one. I say maybe, and I'm looking at it right now. Hold on. Uh, so everyone, well, not everyone, but some people sh know uh, my cr proclivity. Yeah, that's a word. Proclivity for um, Good word. Uh, <laughs> for a certain uh, video game that I may have speedrun and I still have to submit my run for. Um, but um can't remember. Yeah, that's what, yeah, I started getting into uh speedrunning pod racing for like mid to late last year. And so for for uh for 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 Christmas, uh my partner got me uh a little <laughs> <laughs> little, little little Anakin Skywalker there, uh, <laughs> zooming around. I'll, this is funny. There's a there's a there's an interesting story about this model because um, the original there. This is like a remaster okay. of this. Like the original one that came out when the prequels came out um, was not as detailed as this. Like not that this is like a thousand pieces or anything, but it was like much smaller. And um, but like. Apparently they like remastered it, I guess, and like re-released this set. And so you've got like, let's see if my camera is gonna like be good about this. Oh, I have it on. I don't have it on autofocus, but uh, there's like a lot more like these like stickers and stuff like that that mm. like provide more detail. And then like the engines are like a lot more detailed. Like they're actually kind of um. If I had my choice, I probably wouldn't have this pod racer. I'd probably have a different one. But um, this is like the most like iconic thing. The fun thing is like you can like open and close the airfoils and stuff. Yeah, so, I love Lego sets with all that articulated. Yeah, so you can make it look oh. like you're like breaking around a turn or something like that. If you like have the airfoil turn way. It's fun. Like, it's cool. Sometimes when you're building them, you're like, why have they made this so intricately constructed? <laughs> like they could have made this way simpler. It's not <laughs> internal thing but it's actually kind of crazily yeah yeah complex. Like I, could, I did a set recently it's like tokyo skyline so they have like the okay a lot of the big buildings and structures yeah and, and they're, they're so they're like articulated in weird ways that are totally unnecessary oh totally yeah it's 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 funny like there's the ones that like can open and close like doors into like buildings and stuff like that which like the entire inside of the building is like detailed and such mm. those are fun um while I'm, I, so, I only have two Lego sets in this apartment, um, and I have the other one in front of me, um, which is the bane of my existence because I always knock it over somehow, because um, it's on my desk with all of my other garbage, um, and uh, my two great loves, pod racing, and um, where's the other? One? Uh, we have Gandalf on his cart here um, from Fellowship of the Ring. Okay. Not the With... control Lego set then. That's what no. I was kind of <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. My partner just finished control. Jason, you've gotta you gotta step up. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm... <laughs> oh man. Uh but yeah. What, so... what I'd really like to see is a model of like the actual cart that they had to use to film the movies. You know, where like one side the scales are totally weird to make Gandalf. Oh, and the Hobbits yeah. Like there's small. always there's always some really bizarre trickery to make like the hobbits look small in comparison to everyone else. Like there's like, st so, I recently watched the Blu-ray version of Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. which there's stuff wrong with the Blu-ray. 
if, before anyone gets out, like gets at me about them. I don't know if you know about this, Jason, but the Blu-rays no. of the Blu-rays of Lord of the Rings. Controversial, are they? Um, like the quality is good, but the um the color correction is awful. Everything is blue green. Oh no! Like you can pull up side by sides. Uh, they like it's everywhere. Um, you can look at like the Blu-ray thing, whatever versus DVD versus VHS, and like the Blu-ray is like bizarrely blue green in like a ton of places, like really dark. Like I don't mind dark looking movies. Like they look good sometimes if you've got like a really high dynamic range, but there's just like blue green tinting everywhere. <laughs> but I was watching those because oh yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. looking now. It's yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's like really blue green. Um, and apparently they fixed that for the 4k, which I really want to get my hands on at some point. I just can't justify it right now. <laughs> um, soon though. Uh, but yeah, so I was watching that and if when it's on like DVD and VHS, you cannot tell, but there's scenes, especially with, um, when they're running through Moria to escape the Balrog and yeah. they're like on the steps and it and the camera zooms out really far and then they've got like arrows shooting at them and stuff like that um they're all like for all of those scenes they use the stunt doubles for the hob for the hobbits mm. um and you can see <laughs> now when now that the quality is higher you can totally like tell that they're all stunt doubles <laughs> because they're like facing the camera a lot of the time like the angle is not always from behind um so like it's like oh yep that's that's not elijah wood the nope <laughs> like like those are all the hobbit stunt doubles um so yeah um that's one of the like the curses of like remasters and like higher quality versions is that like some of the stuff starts coming apart at the seams where it's like it's kind of like the whole deal with like like nes and like super mm. nintendo and stuff like that where they were using like CRT smoothing to kind of like yeah, make yeah, yeah. things look a certain way. And they took like advantage of that, but like now everything can be pixel perfect. So like sometimes you can try to emulate that like CRT fuzzy smoothing thing, but like a, a lot of times it's often like heavy handed and doesn't quite work. But like the thing is like, there's an argument for, yeah, they, they made it this way because it's supposed to look this way. And like, you know, if you're running through an emulator, you're technically getting, like, the artists, like, exactly how they wanted it. But, like, everyone well, remembers, like, the smudgy you're not, stuff. Though. I mean, you're getting the, the, the data they input, but you're not getting it how they saw it as they were authoring it, right? They saw it through a yeah. CRT, probably. Well, so. it depends. Like, really early stuff was, like, they, uh, before they put it, you know, into code, it was all on, like, graph, graph paper yeah, and stuff true, like that. True. So it's like what uh, like what is the actual intent? Like it it really depends on who you ask. Um like I'm just thinking about like um gosh, like uh you can you can find pages from the original notebook for Pac-Man and they're all done on like graph paper and stuff and like <laughs> yeah. Uh which is is pretty interesting just like looking at how some of those models were made. Well not models, but you know, uh some of the sprites were made and such. I can't remember where I, where I, what I was getting at, but um, I don't even remember. Yeah, <laughs> went from say, like whether, whether, whether they intended, whether they designed with like CRT in mind. Yeah, but, exactly. But... Yeah, it's uh, I don't know, but yeah, it's it's one of those things where unless you do like a full remaster of something, you take it apart bit by bit from like its original like source. It's sometimes things fall apart. Like um, take for example, like. Back to Lord of the Rings. Um, the, the original was shot digitally on, like, the equivalent of, like, 2K resolution mm. or something. Because um, they're like, ah, oh, whoever's going <laughs> to... When are we ever going to get beyond 1080p? Um, <laughs> never. Uh, so uh, in order to do the 4K remaster, a lot of people were freaking out because they're like, oh, like, the source isn't in 4K. Like, what are they going to do? Like, you know, it's going to be garbage. They're just going to try to upscale it. Um, but what they, they actually like re like re scanned it from film negatives and stuff. Um, and I think they redid a lot of the CGI from Yeah. Scratch. I mean, you'd have to re-edit 
if you're recapturing from the negatives, like I guess you have to redo all the edits, right? Yeah, yeah. So they redid like from what I can tell, people are very pleased. Um, so that was the big concern. I'm like, man, I really wanna I really wanna get my hands on that that 4K copies of the extended editions. Um but Yeah. I mean talk about upscaling and I know it's probably blasphemous, but like automatic <laughs> upscaling and AI powered upscaling is pretty amazing. Oh man, yeah. have you seen uh uh there they did um there's been some like interesting stuff with uh like hyper resolution and like upscaling like like frame rate and stuff like that for like old movies and there was one where it's like what does like the stop motion from like Jason and the Argonauts look like when you when you bring it up to like 120 frames per second that. it's wild looking um it's it's weirdly smooth uncanny it's, kind of yeah it's like it's almost like not as scary because the thing with stop, like especially earlier stop motion, is because it's so like jerky and janky that it's like otherworldly and like especially mm. with like when you're animating something like a skeleton, like if they're kind of like you know like moving like really you know uh, jankily. Yeah, I was trying to find a like more eloquent word for that, but uh, yeah, if they're moving like that, then sometimes jankily, it's. Jankily. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes it's scarier than like a fully smooth kind of look. Um, mm. But yeah, highly recommend trying to find that video. Um, they did a whole bunch of different stop motion stuff. Like sometimes it w looks really good, and then sometimes it's like, nah, I kind of prefer like, you know, low frame rate kind of stuff. But I actually have not seen that movie in full. It seems like one of those things that I should have watched. Cause I'm big into like, like, I don't know, like historically important kind of like films. Yeah. Um, and that's one of those that just kind of like push the, push the limit of like stop motion and, um, uh, like combine stop motion with like live actors and stuff. Yeah. Apparently I was actually named after this film. <laughs> this Wait, really? Episode. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen it? I have like it's one. Oh, okay. Actually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I have. It's one of those things. I'm looking now at the video, and obviously I've seen this. It's like just <laughs> in our cultural consciousness. I don't. But know like the I'm whole gonna... thing. Have you sat down know. and like? I don't yeah. know if I have watched the movie like end to end. Maybe when I was really young. Yeah. The skeletons are cool. Yeah. The um. There's a colossus there as well. Um. I don't know if you're watching the same video that I've found, but there's like a video of like this giant colossus like moving and it's like weirdly smooth when it shouldn't be probably and it makes it, it actually makes it more scary because it's like whoa whoa <laughs> yeah. um but yeah yeah there's... like some of like some of the composition tricks they had to do to like layer this stuff was pretty crazy back in the day oh yeah with mirrors and you know semi-silvered glass and all of this optical techniques and things like that yeah like old old animation and old like i guess like mixed mixed media film i guess you could call it um like they have to do some crazy stuff um one of my favorite animated films is the secret of nim um i'm not sure if you're familiar with that um it's um it's like the hyper intelligent mice kind of trope thing oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh yes, yes, yes. It was yes. a book. Um, there's two. One of my there's like two fun facts from that film that I really like. Um, in the book, the main character's name is Mrs. Frisbee. Um, and when they went to go uh, release the film, the Frisbee, you know, like flying disc company, um, they gave them like a cease and desist. <laughs> And so they had to go back and all the, they had already like recorded all the lines and stuff like that. So instead of having people come back into the studio to redo the voiceover, one of the audio editors just took like the letter B from every character, like who like pronounces uh, Mrs. Frisbee's name and just put the B in instead of the F and like splice the audio. So it was Mrs. Brisby instead of wow, mrs frisbee yeah that must have been a pain in the ass to like mvp there to that yeah i know <laughs> must have been a pain to like get that to actually sound right um but uh yeah so that's number one but more importantly with like film technique and stuff um there's a lot of like really bright 
colors that happen, like really bright flashes of light. Mm. And there's two films that were kind of known for this technique. It's like uh, The Secret of Nim and The Black Cauldron. Um, what they did was they, um, when you're shooting like animation like that, they have like multiple layers of cell frames. Yeah. And you put them in like hoppers basically, and you can like parallax them and you can make them move forward and backwards to like work with like focus and stuff. Yep. But what they did was um, they covered like, um, in order to get those like bright flashing lights and stuff, like really otherworldly looking for the most part, um, they painted like a blank cell sheet with like this like colored gel. And then as they were shooting, they shone like a really, they, they uh, like a really bright light onto the gel. And mm. it like made this like huge, brilliant, uh, like flashes of light and stuff like that. Um, so they used, they used that in Secret of Nim, they used that in the Black Cauldron. Um, those are like the two ones cool. that I can yeah. think of. I remember seeing videos of, I think it was Disney behind the scenes stuff, these big rigs they use for these, yeah, these yeah. layering and parallax so they can like scroll the backgrounds along independently and i guess they, they kind of like stop motion as well the way they had to do it yeah it's really crazy um very, very intricate. <laughs> yeah i i learned about the, the those big like huge parallax scrolling machine and um uh in florida there's um the, there's like a salvador dali museum um, he did a disney film right a short animated thing yeah like something donald in math magic land or something like that it's really yeah. weird i <laughs> It's a bizarre. I mean, film. it's what you expect from a Salvador Dali. Animation, Dali always like. amazes me because when I think of Dali and Picasso, I think of them as like old masters, and really they were like alive in like the fifties. <laughs> like, yeah, As they're not that old. Dali on what's that old American show where they have to guess who the guest is by like asking them, asking them questions? Like, you oh, can I see have them no idea. Stuff, right? It's it's kind of surreal. there's um there's a there's a video I saw a few days ago online where it's just like, oh, Dolly just like hooked up with a filmmaker and they just had them film him do a, like a painting from scratch. Like, so you could watch him like stroke by stroke, like what he does. I'm like, oh, that's kind of wild. <laughs> you can't get that with like almost any other like super well-respected famous like painter, like, you know, mm. of that caliber. You can just watch like stroke by stroke, but yeah. um uh back to what i was saying um for yeah and that in the dali museum they had like a bunch of films about like uh recordings about the technologies that they used and like how they were like trying to push boundaries and stuff like that especially with dali um so it was uh it was really interesting um and that's how i learned about like those huge like parallax scrolling <laughs> cell manipulation machines so yeah, I mean, I guess we, you know, yeah, we think of people like Dali's, these old masters, but they were kind of like upstart, like an upstart movement. Oh yeah, not that long ago, right? Like twenties, fifties, that kind of era. Yeah, like the whole realist thing. They, yeah, they were modern. You know, they were. You know, only hundred years ago, modernists. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's a thing called like mid-century modern. Like it's not modern anymore, but it's like the modernist movement. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so should probably go over these patches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk about random stuff yeah, all day. Can we talk about Finn's art stream quickly as well? Yeah, exactly. Um, let's do the let's do the patch notes, and then I'm okay. gonna bring up some images um, from the Discord. Uh, awesome. Uh, but yeah, so this week uh, we've got version 4.26 Augur. Um, what we have done is we added a attack bonus terrain object, um, which is rotating to the right of me on screen right now. Um, this little lightning bolt we've got here. Um, so it's basically like the inverse to our HP pickup. So essentially uh, you jump on it and then you get like a one-time buff to do some bonus damage um, on your next attack. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it is symmetrical, right? So it's five damage. Or is it, it is 10? 10 damage. Ooh, okay. So that's kind of brutal. I, I, did, I did reduce the frequency that it respawns at. Oh, okay. Okay. But I figured so... you know, it's it's basically the same effect as like Ranger's support stance gets 
sure. uh, or Warrior Sentinel. Those give you five extra. I thought, you know, if this is a pickup, yeah, try bumping it up and just. Well, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, because support does like extra damage, but it also like triggers another attack as well. So it's this is like an all at once type thing. So it's not as hard to cash in essentially. Yeah. Um, but reducing the the spawn rate is interesting because it really if if you make it really juicy like 10 damage people are very 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 uh uh very much encouraged to to pick this up and yeah. break out of their formations and and take this because 10 damage is pretty big um especially if, if you've got like some kind of damage modifier or anything like that um like that that's a lot so reducing yeah. the spawn rate is i mean it might, it might break things but might as well throw it in there that's what this is for um <laughs> yeah it's Off the top of, of your head, do you know what the spawn rate is for this? I think it's every eight. Turns. Okay, every eight turns. So you would get it. That's interesting because at this rate, it would be like in the beginning, and then almost into the mid game is the next time this would spawn if you picked it up immediately. Yeah. Um, ten. Sorry, it's ten actually. Okay, so ten. Yeah, so it gets into the mid game almost at that point because at that point, everyone's had a turn. Um, yeah, yeah, you might I'm get not, like, yeah. you might get like two or three of these maybe if you're pretty proactive about picking them up. Yeah, which highly recommend <laughs> for ten damage. That's like very important. Um, but yeah, so uh, we've added that terrain object, um, and uh, we added some new battlefield layouts that take advantage of uh, that feature rather um, that terrain object. Uh, that's that's pretty much it for for like new features. Um, in terms of bugs, uh, last stream we found out that shock wasn't quite working as intended uh for the like damage calculation at the end of um at the end of the game uh so just trying to figure out like who damaged you and um you know who got like a knockout and stuff like that wasn't quite working as intended uh mm -hmm. so we took a peek into that and assumedly fixed it <laughs> so should be fixed yes should should be fixed uh so not like the biggest deal, but it's nice to see that kind of stuff work out. Work. Um, but yeah, so that's the, that's about it for those patch notes. Um, but what I am going to do is... Yeah, I mean, we don't want to shortchange um, Bolt for all the damage they do by shock. Cause it's, <laughs> we, we saw it be really, really effective. Yeah, it was <laughs> pretty effective. So may as well count the damage for it. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um... I'm going to try to display capture. Oh, that's kind of working. I'm just like, this is like my previous save <laughs> of this display capture. I don't know why it's like this. <laughs> Let me move this around slightly. Oh, display capture. Oh, because it's underneath. <laughs> it's not letting me do anything. Cool, excellent. So we're gonna try to do this in an interesting way here. Let's do up. Uh, so if you want to see the full image of this, <laughs> you can go on to uh, you can go onto our Discord. But uh, Ben made some he was making some really cool uh, illustrations uh, for the chemist. Um, and this is this is kind of the current state of our of our sketch kind of like that um hyper detailed league of legends promo style image uh for this this particular character um yeah so the past few streams uh he's been making some thumbnails and uh decided to pursue this one um this is kind of like higher angle kind of image him looking up um so we're still gonna try to figure out like what we want to do for like the background um yeah. but you start to add those like um those fine details uh for the line art uh for ms tier yeah this is very cool i'm, I'm yes. a big fan of it i think this, is, this was my favorite of the thumbnails as well yeah it was nice yeah i did also like the one where he's kind of preaching in front of a crowd yeah but in terms of focusing just on the character this is is really great you get these gnarly hand <laughs> yeah hand very gnarly board. hand like you've got that like one little this like pinky that i'm like struggling like it this is this is possible to do with your pinky but it's not very comfortable 
<laughs> uh, it's a very gnarly hand doing some crazy stuff there, so. And having them look directly at the camera, at the viewer. Oh, yeah. He's, like, self-aware. Just like, I know. I, I, I see you watching. You're there. Watch me do my watch me do my magic. Well, it's not magic, but watch me do watch me do the thing that they pay me to do. <laughs> so, yeah, there's yeah, there's so many things that would be cool to fit into the background. So I'm very curious to see how Fen picks yeah. that out. And what to go with. Is this going to be inside the chemist's lab? Is this going to be outside, featuring some more of the like architecture of the the faction they're associated with? And, yeah, I don't know. There's like so many options here. Um, just have to be careful because like the character is like two thirds of the, um, of like the composition, and mm. then you've got you need to get that that smoke going as well. Um, so that's it's gonna be there's gonna be a lot going on, but I like what I see. I definitely do. Uh, but yeah, so that's what Fen's been up to. So you can catch Fen. When's Fen's doing his things? Is it Wednesdays now? Um, or is it just kind of like a week by week thing? Day they're going with. I'm gonna drop their Twitch link in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Fen streams it on 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 his channel. Mm -hmm. Um, we will host can... them. You know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's I I always find watching artists do their thing. Um, very, very interesting. Yeah, Ben's I'm... also very good about talking about the lore and the character and the world yeah. and stuff. So it's a an ex, you know extended chance to talk about all of that stuff as well. Yeah, you can pry. You can <laughs> you can probably get some more information out of him. Uh, so which is which is totally fine if you're if you're that if you're that interested in uh in uh in our lore and getting to know a little bit more about the world uh that these characters are in um and that's probably one of the streams to do so yeah but yeah that's what fen's up to right um yeah so what else are we up to jason yeah, I mean, there's the behind the scenes work. We're keeping our fortnightly patches coming out, focusing mostly, I guess, on terrain objects. I think maybe we will try throwing out our commander mode. I think that might happen. It's queued oh, yeah. up, right? It's working, and we we need to do a little bit more playtesting on our end on that. But that's a definite option which we may think to put out as soon as the next patch or the one after that. Have we mentioned our commander mode yet? I'm not sure. I think we we, I, I, I'm sure the idea probably came up on stream. To be honest, um, I think it did. Yeah, that, you, I think it was. I think this was your brainchild at one point. I, I think it was. I'll, I like. I don't know. I was trying to find like some alternate modes and stuff, and I thought about like, um, gosh, there's a mode for Magic the Gathering mode. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. Uh, alternate var variant variant gameplay uh, called Commander, which. I don't know the full details of that, but basically, like you have like you build your entire deck around one card. I'm like, oh, it would be interesting if you you could have like one Steamhound who's like souped up or like relatively more important than the other ones, and you kind of like try to build a strategy around that character being more powerful. And but if that character gets knocked out, then the game's over. Um, yeah. So that's that's essentially how it works. Um, we're still like rooting around in the fine details about what more powerful means um, and how that works, like whether that means more health, whether that means more health and more damage, um, exactly what that means, you know, um, whether like, we've tossed around like, oh, what if they started with focus or something like that? Because um, that'll really like accelerate what's happening on the, <laughs> on the battlefield really quickly. So, yeah, some of the other things we talked about are trying to make it so that Ideally, I, I guess we want each character to be a viable option as a commander. And yeah. some of those parameters for how they get boosted may be more or less effective for different characters, right? So if they're a more utility character, then is boosting their damage enough? Focus is maybe a bit more universally. Health and focus, everyone's going to benefit from those in pretty much equal yeah. measure. I'm, I'm inclined towards, towards those, perhaps. 
Yeah, I, I think that's probably for the best. Um, and this mode is definitely one of those things where it's kind of like a, a fun thing to do. Um, not That's not to say we can't use something like this um, in the single player stuff at some point. Um, you know, some alternate objective kind of thing. You know, like protect XYZ. You know, try to take out opponents like main unit or something like that. Um, but this is this this might look like it's for fun, but there's there's a lot of applications for stuff like. That. Um, yeah, I mean the game has supported technically kind of alternate win conditions for a long time. We've just never actually used them, and yeah, kind of behind the scenes is working on single player. It's figuring out how to add interesting variation to the single player battles within the missions and stuff. Is yeah, it's it's about. interesting because so, yeah. this is. The way that we have this combat, it's like the, our combat is not really like grindy. Um, like a lot of it, it's like we've kind of made it in a way so that a lot of it is kind of like, lack of a better term, like kind of chunky and like almost puzzle based sometimes. Like you're trying to figure out like the best best line. Um, so we have to figure out like in terms of difficulty, what that means, um, and how far we can push certain sliders and stuff like that to not only increase like you know we can increase like th the damage that enemies deal we can increase their health but what does that mean in terms of difficulty different objectives or you know like uh character layouts and combinations um battlefield terrains and like how does that fit into the difficulty of like picking apart that combat puzzle as opposed to like oh these enemies are just more tougher than the other ones that you've seen um, yeah I mean that's part of it, but there's, there's yeah. going to be some like attrition and resource management, but it's yeah. not going to be like the JRPG where it's can I get through this dungeon? Yeah, <laughs> Phoenix Downs or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's um, and obviously when once we get farther into uh, the design of the economy of that, like that'll definitely feed into how we do is like. Where do we, how do we influence the economy with how our combat works and how do we, and how does that happen vice versa? Um, like, cause you want there to be, you don't always want the player to have all the resources in the world in order to always set up the perfect strategy. Like you want there to be some limitations sometimes because they're going to have to work. We, I think I would say I wouldn't want the player to always be able to set up the perfect strategy with the characters that they have. Um, like, I want to throw them into inopportune, inopportune circumstances um, that'll force them to get creative or figure out what they can do to get out of there with the least amount of losses. Because um, that can be, you know, not. I'm not saying like this is failure, but um, failure can be interesting um, if done right. Or, you know, like, not complete... More accurately, not complete success is more interesting than 100% complete success with every encounter that you do. So... Do you call it, like, a Pyrrhic victory? Yeah, yeah, like, that can be interesting in of itself, you know, as long as it doesn't feel... Like, as long as you feel like you had some control over um, what you lost in a battle, mm. uh, or, like, the price that you paid, as opposed to, like... You know, no matter what I do, I'm I'm gonna lose this character, yeah. or like no matter what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lose this resource. It's like, oh, if you can kind of choose, like, do I lose this resource, a lot of this resource, or do I lose like a little bit of this very important one, or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but that's it's getting a little bit ahead of where we are <laughs> right now, probably. Um, like, the goal of what we're doing here is kind of like. Proving that the combat is interesting and can be shaken up in different ways um, that will make not every battle exactly the same. Um, and we're beginning to show that with battlefield terrains and um, alternate alternate win conditions and objectives. Um, I think those are really key to showing like, yes, this combat model is flexible. There are things yep. we can do with this. Um, I think that's kind of key to what we want to show people. Um, but uh, which gives yeah. me an idea for something, Jason, and <laughs> I, don't know if you're, I don't, I don't know if you're gonna like it. <laughs> you can be 
reveal here or <laughs> what do you say is it something you can reveal or do i need to prepare myself uh no like it's well uh if we're gonna like iron out commander mode is it possible to put that wind condition into um like knocking out one certain character is that possible to do in say the vertical slice at the end is that possible because yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know what i'm talking you know what i'm thinking about because they have we have that souped up character that they're gonna have to take out i wonder mm. if that can be like hey take out this one <laughs> um i think that could be interesting and i also don't think it's too much to introduce to people in terms of shaking things our, our players yeah. are smart <laughs> definite option yeah i think I, as long as it doesn't like push back yeah. like it's like as well as just making variety it's it's we need to be able to make the battles reflect what's happening kind of in the story and situation yeah yeah exactly it's kind of works in both directions there exactly that's that's totally true because you want it to be thematically like interesting like we you totally want there to be a situation or it's like hold out for x rounds you know like that, that that's such a that's like an interesting thing that you can do and tie into the story it's like you're kind of like holding out until you can get more assistance from like fellow steam hounds or something but, um that's that's an interesting thing you just have to like survive x rounds which now i'm thinking about it and it's like oh man how many delay turn shenanigans can you do in order to like <laughs> eke out more rounds i mean that might be a viable strategy like i think that's fun and interesting um but uh yeah i, I think if we could try to fit in like hint at like hey our combat model's flexible like there's interesting things you can do because it kind of brings me to like the XCOM problem, which was um, like if if in XCOM you you could only like if your only objective was like take out all the enemies, I think XCOM would get a little boring. Um, but especially with some of the newer XCOMs, they've introduced a lot of like alternate objectives, and secondary objectives. It runs out, all of this stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Or like you know like take over this control point or. Uh, you know, you've got a, got a, this thing spawned in. You got to take it out within five turns, and it didn't spawn in at the beginning of the, of the encounter. So you get kind of like taken by surprise by it or something. Like, that. like that's rescue the VIPs. That's another. Yeah, stuff like that. That's that stuff is interesting. <laughs> I'm just thinking. Oh gosh, rescue the VIPs. I'm just thinking about Steamhounds like attacking NPCs in order to like release their bonds on the battlefield or something like that. <laughs> like uh in order to like free them from the opponent side of the battlefield that would be man i'm just thinking about that that's kind of interesting yeah there's there's so many things you could possibly do but anyway yeah so should we try out this new i think we should attack bonus i, I think that would be a good thing to do so maybe i'll drop a link in and see if yeah anyone's... You know, I'll I'll just take that challenge. I think we're a little lean today, so I will I will just take you up on that one. I will say Pokemon Snap has been released as of yesterday, so <laughs> there's uh some people might be playing that one. Um, myself included. <laughs> oh, it's the photography one. Is it like an on-rails thing? Yeah, it's just like the first one, um, but there's a lot more to it this um, Yeah, I mean, I saw, the, I saw the original. I don't really get into it is it more of like a relaxing thing or is there much yeah it's it's a lot it's a lot more chill i mean there's like um think of something where you have like you're on rails and you're going through like think of an on rail shooter but instead of killing things you're taking pictures of pokemon <laughs> um and they have like pre-scripted like things that the pokemon do and they run around and they do things and uh all that kind of stuff uh no new pad yet uh show the boxes andrew <laughs> hold on we still got boxes <laughs> we got boxes and bubble wrap <laughs> no i've got like two months <laughs> uh yeah i don't think we're i don't think we're moving into the new pad 
Uh, like I, I had, I had high hopes that um, the sellers would have found a new place by now, because we're kind of like in a thing where like we bought the house, but we're allowing the sellers to stay in the, their, that the house that they just bought from. Yeah, that we just bought from them for like a while. Um, they they have an end date, but uh, yeah, I was hoping they would find a place, but they haven't yet. <laughs> so. We're just kind of chilling with boxes for a while until we get there. But thanks for asking. You'll know I won't have I won't have boxes behind me. Well, maybe I will have boxes behind me when we move into the new place. If you ever feel stressed out, all that bubble wraps right there. <laughs> I, I exactly. I can just like reach over and up, 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 up. It's like a, got like big bubbles too. It's crazy. Yeah, the market's crazy. Um, also, like the sellers want to live in a very specific place um which i'm assuming is for school systems um oh, which hope. which makes it which makes it harder <laughs> um so yeah it's um it, it's tough but so do, i, do I think these, yeah. do you have a lot of these shenanigans with people trying to get into the right school zone and say they're living somewhere or they're actually living somewhere else and all these um workarounds I don't know if we have too many of those shenanigans here. Um, it's mostly people just like trying to live in a very specific place so that they can. Um... Actually, I'm gonna change the scene real quick so you can see what I'm doing. A uh, specific place for like specific school zones and stuff like that. Like it's not. I wouldn't say it's like too crazy, but what I want to do. All right, we're gonna do it. Actually, no. No, I've, <laughs> I've lied. Do non standard T. Um, but yeah, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, just try to stay positive. I mean, it's not like I can't do anything about it. Like, I just got to wait. <laughs> I just have to wait. That's all I have to do. So it's not like a difficult thing for me. Um, oh, gee. Jason, I didn't even see the. <laughs> the button. I just totally ignored it. <laughs> well, I saw the button, but I completely ignored the uh, that it was diagonal. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to do now. Oh, <laughs> uh, what kind of team? Oh man, you've got the the OG team there. Well, kind of. Yeah, that's pretty much the OG. Uh, what do we want to do? That I think no. Yes. Maybe. Ah, this'll do. This is uncharted territory. I'm not familiar with this map, but I, gu I guessed correctly, at least. So that's good. <laughs> oh, well, I couldn't resist it. You know, it was right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you did pick that up immediately. All right. I probably should have just stepped right on it. Ah, darn it, Jason. <laughs> I mean, uh, I for some power. reason, uh, for some reason, I thought that it wouldn't pick it up or something. It would just consume it before counting it as a pickup or something. Whatever. This is fine. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> we'll get there. All right, what are we doing here today? I would like to something. What that thing is, I'm not 100% sure. It's an interesting thing because I kind of want to pull somebody, but the problem is it doesn't super help. We're going to try it anyway, though. I want to see what happens. That's fine, I guess. Okay, we're gonna try something. We're, we're doing high risk, high reward here. <laughs> Looks like it. I don't think that was the smartest move to do. I mean, obviously the smartest move was to actually start a character on the buff. 
probably starting on the buff was the smartest move. Are you serious? <laughs> At least you get let me get a little bit of damage in on uh, on our buddy here. Oh, that was um high risk, no reward. I think is uh <laughs> is what is happening right here. Um, is it possible to save you? Oh, we're gonna try because if it, if I think if I lose this character, I'm just done. Yeah, I think if I lose the character, it's all over. So we're going to make an attempt. I mean, the alternative to that was to do uh, a nice little poke and then to get the berserker in there to do some additional damage. Um, but I don't know if that would have put the character down low enough. Yeah, because you can just do that, so. Darn, darn, darn. <laughs> Not amused. Um, what do we want to do here? What do we want? I think we're going to try stuff. It's worth it. It's not worth it. <laughs> Nothing, it's not worth it at all. I think I know what I'm, what's happening here. None of this has been worth it. But you had fun. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I also just realized I should have done something slightly different as well. I kind of messed up my own stuff. I fully was e expecting uh, the nice engineer here to not survive at all. So that's a pleasant surprise, but slight problem here. Um, what do you want to do? Exactly. It's about the adventure. It's about the journey. <laughs> <laughs> just, I guess. Fun, fun in that. Uh. <laughs> no. He died on it's, the oh. it's I know. This is not my finest hour. <laughs> oh, this is so painful. I think this is the worst I've ever been routed. I think my, my track record for the last games that I've played on stream have been very good. Mm -hmm. Like... I have, I don't, I can't remember the last time I've actually lost. Um, this is not going to go well. <laughs> oh boy. Absolutely destroyed. Cool, I've got buffs. Things are looking up. Gonna happen. No, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> oh no. All right, what are we doing here? That's not gonna do anything. I don't think I can survive that long. That's three, six bikes. Um, can I like does this actually count? All right. All right, Ooh. that'll do. That'll do. Hang in there, buddy. <laughs> Just gotta hang in there. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, this is so rough. Oh, no. This is 
I thought I could get it down to a uh, to a one v one situation, but it was it was not meant to be. Ah, uh, yikes! Not good. But think of how much damage that would have been. Just just think about it. <laughs> oh, it's so rough. Ah, got routed. Should we make it a best of three? <laughs> sure. Sure, let's do that. Oh, man, I got completely destroyed there. I think it was definitely in part because I did not start a character on the buff, which I was hoping. I don't know what I was thinking. Not much, apparently. Um, but yeah, that, that really, that 10 damage really speeds things up. Um, that was that was that was no good. That was no good for me. <laughs> might be nice to see total number of turns in that uh, post battle stats. Might be quite nice. Yeah, I think that would be good. I am the d -d duel. All right, let's get back in there. Ooh. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay. Um This is there's a lot of things going on here. Normally I talk to myself about strategy, but now I can't because because Jason's on the other line. <laughs> what are we doing here? A lot of things happening. Okay, we're gonna make an attempt. For the record, I do not know what I'm doing. <laughs> so. Oh boy. Okay. Um. I hope I'll be fine. <laughs> uh, okay, what have we got here? That, that, that. Mm, your team are much faster than mine. Okay. You've seen my strategy. <laughs> that was, <laughs> I was temp attempting to pick fast characters. That was the, that was that was part of it. Yeah. So I was going to not start on the thing, but... <laughs> You're going to have to, yeah? Yeah. Oh, you've locked me out. Okay. I was I was hoping to do one particular thing, but you did not let me do that. That's okay, though. Whatever that was, I did not specifically anticipate it. This uh, it's okay. <laughs> Um, what do you want to do? You know what? Against my better judgment. Item, though. <laughs> uh, I, I I'm not sure if it's gonna do enough, but it's it really annoying though. It's very annoying. I'll say that it's much. Slowing me down, and I can't do what I wanted to 
do. <laughs> Ironically, that's where I had the warrior in Sentinel. Hmm. Sure. Now we're fine. I've got ten seconds left. Uh. No. Do, do this. Do that. Stay there. What am I doing? Okay. This is fine. start to pick some stuff apart. <laughs> um, yeah, we're still fine. I think I opened myself up to some shenanigans, but... Ah, <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> well... There goes the team. <laughs> oh, man. Today's been interesting. I'll say that much. There goes the whole team. Man, at least you don't have the attack bonus on him, too. That would have been terrible. <laughs> uh, disaster strikes. I mean, you mentioned shenanigans. Is that what you were... <laughs> Oh, it's, uh, kind of, but not really. What I was hoping to do was I was hoping you didn't actually put anyone behind um, the half cover so I could just stick a totem in there so that whoever was on the damage uh, pickup would have taken a lot of damage over time. That was the hope, at least. Um, but, oh, man, it's so rough. It's so, so rough. Oh, it's not going to do it. <laughs> We're just attempting to do something. I mean, my engineer is not looking too good. I mean, yeah, but I have so many characters who are not looking so hot, so. I should have known. I should have known. The thing, the thing is, like, I feel like the, the engineer is kind of, like, secondary to your main strategy right now. I just noticed Paul's comment. I am not going easy on Jason. This is a bad day. <laughs> oh, man. You gotta survive, Ranger. What are you doing? Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, what are we doing? Man, if I could just take this out real quick, that would be really nice. Those numbers are very good. I like these numbers. Actually, I think I can do it. Okay, I think I can do this in a very particular way. Oh. Shenanigans. <laughs> this is shenanigans, actually. <laughs> um, This is very much shenanigans. Am I going to get doing this. Well, slightly. I think it'll be worth it. <laughs> yep, this is fine. Oh, wow, it's a lot of damage, though. That's rather unfortunate. I need to work on my... Oh, this is going to be interesting. Mm. I don't like doing this, but we'll figure it out. <clears throat>
I do this correctly. Oh, it's not quite enough. Oh man, this is rough. <laughs> Ranger still up though. Ranger is up technically. <laughs> um, we're gonna make this a difficult decision. I hope. I hope. Heal as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that's not a great place for that to spawn. No, no. What have we done? I thought he was going to die. Oh my goodness. I thought he was done. How did I miscalculate that? That's so rough. Oh my God. I can't believe that. Oh no. Everything is ruined now. Oh, it's ruined. I have to retire in shame today. Yeah, you got me into a bad situation there. Uh, that's actually a pretty good setup. Well, what the heck? And it's just too fast. It's too fast. even want to do here I like do that and then... man this is so rough It's not going to be enough. No. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. It's so, so bad. I don't think I can get out of this one. That's so rough. Oh, terrible. Changed my mind. This is terrible. <laughs> ah, one health. Oh my gosh, this is brutal. Oh, in style, too. <laughs> That's so bad. Yikes. This is shameful. <laughs> what have I done? Oof. Oh, no. Savor that one. Savor, savor that one for a while. Hopefully I don't that doesn't happen. Again. Right moment, yeah. <laughs> right now, but you know. <laughs> oh, yikes. Well I guess um the environment claimed one of the knockouts, so <laughs> you didn't get everything. <laughs> I got what uh, I wanted. <laughs> you no, know, yeah, which is victory. <laughs> Supreme victory. Oh man. I was so rough. Why? 
and I have to go back to school. I think it was just this has little oversight. Just let me do the uh, the horizontal. Yeah, that would have been and the engineers one as well. The thing is, like, um, that's actually a really good um, team composition because in that setup, you cannot stack up either way. You mm -hmm. can easily just focus someone up with the warrior, and um, by doing so, like, you can just immediately have that focus to immediately do one of those uh, moves at very in at very short notice. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting. You're like locking people out into like a, a weird staggered kind of thing where you have to stack somebody up in some yeah. way, like you have to do it. So regardless, two people are always going to get hit by something, um, pretty rough. <laughs> um, the only way to really work with that, work against that strategy is, um, by knocking out the engineer as soon as possible because mm. that way you can spread out um you, you can finally spread out in in one way so you can kind of for the most part stay in a a, a vertically oriented uh column formation uh so that you don't have to worry about getting multiple targets hit uh by shio but yeah because yeah. i guess if you <laughs> if you uh Focus Shio, then the warrior's still got shove, at least. I mean, it's not quite as bad, but... Yeah, that shove is a thing, but it's really not that much of a... It, it does do plenty of damage, but it's not like Shio's, which can hit three characters and causes a big problem. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I mean, Shio's stuff also has a debuff attached to it as well, because uh, it armor breaks, so you're going to be a, you're gonna end up doing damage in a turn. Um of that arm. rough all around uh could not knock out that should have probably there was like one opportunity where i think i could have done a little bit more damage to the engineer um and instead i decided to try to instead try to start to stack up some damage on the warrior a little bit i think that's what kind of screwed me over there um, okay you could have taken ng out i, th I think i could have but I wasn't thinking far enough ahead where I didn't know that NG was going to have like two health left. <laughs> so <laughs> if I knew that NG was going to have like two health left, I would have just like, you know, dealt with it and just did like a, a, a tiny amount of damage. Yeah, it also, it. I think the main thing that screwed me up was your positioning in the beginning of the battle because I had assumed that you weren't going to bother to put someone behind the half cover. Um, because I was hoping that, I was hoping that you were going to put someone on the damage boost but i was hoping that you weren't going to put someone behind the half cover um but then i realized that i actually had more range damage than i thought um i think maybe i would have done better picking maybe the berserker instead of the ranger i think um yeah I mean, when because... i see the ranger i normally take the cover just kind of as a rule of thumb i just do it but yeah, it's it's kind of like chess, right? There's a lot of this positional yeah. thing and all of this stuff. It's all it's all in there. Yeah, it's it's like when you like watch these people just like talk about chess in like a completely abstract, well, not the opposite of abstract, a very specific way, and like they're like going over like, oh, you remember the battle? Like, you know, the, yeah, it's called a chess battle. Definitely, good job. Um, it's like <laughs> they're matches. They're not, you know, unless you're doing battle chess, a whole other thing, but. Um, yeah, you can kind of, like, pick things apart once you know the vernacular and memorize certain strategies and counterplays and such. For our openings, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. You can call mine the Fool's Gambit, um, anytime you want. <laughs> that did not work out today. Um, no, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure there will be names for um team compositions and like positional strategies and stuff like that but a lot of that stuff is going to revolve around the um the layout of the battlefield as well um because that's gonna that's gonna change what you can and cannot do <laughs> so yeah it, it's it's interesting when we were thinking about um strategy in this game like how do we introduce strategy especially in like a multiplayer variant of the combat uh, system 
there's a lot of stuff you can do with hiding and revealing certain information at certain times. Like eventually we kind of, we, we settled on what we have now, which is um, both players can see the battlefield immediately, um, but you cannot place characters until it's revealed what your opponent has chosen for characters as well. So, and there's so many different variations on what information can be shown at any given point that changes kind of your order of operations for the most part. Uh, so an interesting one. Call it every opening move even. <laughs> yeah, there's uh... I actually quite like that genre. Like, uh, yeah. Did you watch any of the Mahjong animes? No, I don't. I, I want to get into Mahjong. Dude, I just got into Cribbage pretty hard, actually. Um, it's like those, I call them old man games. Um, it sounds like an old man game, doesn't it? I, I like you Cribbage. Know, you find onions and play Cribbage. I, you know what? I, I, I have a Cribbage board. Um, I mean, it, that's not saying anything. It's like you can get one for like 10 bucks or whatever, but you can technically play Cribbage without a board. It's a little bit harder to points but uh yeah it's um i want to get into module that's the that's interesting yeah yeah thanks rabbit uh we have we have so much more to show but like we are just like so close uh to show like a lot of more of the i would say like the flashier stuff we've been trying to work on um there's there's some more flashy things going on but it just it takes time so it's it's still probably gonna be a couple to a few months probably before we can like start sharing stuff around i mean i don't yeah we'll see we'll see what we do <laughs> yeah there's different things that we can share at different times as we're working on like technically i guess we you can say that we're working on different builds for different for showing different people different things kind of yeah so, and i'm sure we'll need some stuff tested by people in the community and so if you're interested you can definitely <laughs> I, I'm gonna say with pretty high certainty that you can probably see some things before a lot of other people um if you're motivated enough to to do so because yeah this is one of those inflection points where once we like release things out into the world like a lot more people will start well that's the hope a lot more people will start seeing these things because visuals visuals sell um you know, uh, got some fun visual works. So perfection. I don't know about perfection, but yeah, yeah. perfection is a strong word. Um, <laughs> improvement. There's uh, lots of to detail. There's lots of little minute things that we. That we worry yeah, about. there's there's gonna be a lot of um, there's gonna be a lot of details that probably are not gonna get a hundred percent resolved <laughs> with this, but we're gonna get really far into it. Um, like as far as we can possibly get um, real talk without a lot of outside funding <laughs> so basically yeah that's just how it works that's just how it works you can only work at something for so long without um, bringing in like real professionals real professionals for some very specific things that you'd be surprised how small the community is for very specific professional uh, work so but yeah, we do what we can because we must. <laughs> and because we love to. We also enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, but that that's the thing. Like, if none of us enjoyed this, we wouldn't be doing this. Uh, and uh, we've been working on it for so long uh, that we're, um, you know, we, if we didn't enjoy what we were doing, we wouldn't be. You know? um, so I think hopefully, hopefully that says, hopefully that says enough of what we want to say about what we're doing. That we're here kicking streaming um you know releasing patches and going off new stuff and you know we got a lot of things going on but um just that's just indie life so <laughs> uh but yeah uh does someone else want to get clobbered today uh besides me um because <laughs> i'm done getting destroyed <laughs> Uh, which podcast are you talking about? Um, because. Yeah. Because we want to know. Yeah. Yeah. 
It wouldn't happen to be a certain podcast that I know about. <laughs> I've actually been on a podcast like twice now. That's kind of a weird thing to say. But yeah. So it's Super GG Radio. I actually haven't checked in on them in a little while, so. I'm going to laugh, oh rabbit, if you're someone from Super GG Radio and you're just messing with me this entire time. Because <laughs> I have a distinct feeling that that's might that what that's might what be <laughs> excuse me English um, that might be happening right now. <laughs> but yeah, I think the last time we left it with um um like I was like yeah we don't want to I don't want to go on this show again until we have like the vertical slice out because <laughs> because we want to show off like new cool stuff. Yeah, um, you'll probably get uh, blocked in if you put the links in this chat in particular, but um, if you drop it in the Discord, um, you will not be blocked, I hope. <laughs> or you could just message um, any one of us directly uh, through DM on, on Discord. So, because we're, there's at least three developers here. Who are uh, present so <laughs> Paul can you beat Jason can you do that for me please <laughs> I, I would I would I would love for that to happen <laughs> yeah maybe it's just my day today maybe I'm gonna it is you're you're absolutely you destroyed me two times in a row um you can do it sounds like a challenge let's go Paul <laughs> Get it. Go. It's a statement of fact, is it? It's gonna it's gonna happen. Okay. And we need to get more people in here so I can do uh channel predictions. I've done it literally once. When I probably should have done it a couple other times when we had more people in here. All right, are uh, both of you in there? All right, I know I know Paul's in there. Characters now, yep. All right, cool. There. Ah, oh, interesting. <laughs> I I like that. I I, I like the. We got a minimalist, minimalistic layout. Oh, that's interesting because it like allows you to do like a lot of different things that you normally couldn't. Like it's like more ideal strategy, I guess. Like in a vacuum. Like, mm. how can I push out as much DPS as possible? Or, like, how can I have the most prickly porcupine of uh, of defensive strategies? You know what, Rabbit? I'm going to mod you very quickly, because I trust you. <laughs> you can throw so the you links can, in so the So you can throw the links, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to abuse okay. your mod privileges for like the five minutes that you have though. <laughs> we have another mod temporary. So oh, much it's power. So it's been on an open battlefield. I just. You don't know what to do. It's, it's, it's so like, it's too much freedom. It's like, no, can it really be that simple? Sometimes it is. Yeah, Rabbit, you're now a mod, so temporarily. <laughs> so if you want to put those uh, links right into the chat, that would be super cool. Nice, nice, nice. I was on um I was on a friend's stream last night uh because she recently started streaming and um it's interesting being on a stream but not being the actual like quote streamer I guess. Yeah. <laughs> kind of it's kind of freeing in a way. 
because I can get away with um, not saying anything for a while and get into some shenanigans that the streamer eventually figures out. <laughs> Uh, Gamer Studio. Where's that tag? Is that in a... Is that a Discord tag? Is that a Twitch tag? Looks like it's Twitch. Gamer Studio Limited dot company dot site. I think that might be... Oh, UK based. Okay, cool. I think we would be able to find this person pretty easily. Yep, there's a lot of stuff out there. All right, excellent. Thank you. Um, I hope you. I hope you're not offended, but Jason, can you uh, un un unmod the rabbit real quick? <laughs> Thank you. Let's get into it. Yep, we're in. We're in now. Sweet, sweet. All right, we're in there. Oh, man, this brings me back. Yeah, you weren't kidding about this layout being completely free. Yeah, there was a, there was a pick up on the middle tile. Okay. Both, like, circa, it looks like. Yep. It's going to be extra brutal, extra fast. Uh, lamppost gaming. All right, cool, sweet. I'll look up lamppost real quick. Uh, uh. Oh, lamppost. Uh, does lamppost have um, YouTube and Twitter and other things? I really like that emote by the way <laughs> it's it's freaking great um oh man all right we're back in yeah thanks for hooking us up i'll uh we'll we'll look into that we'll what, put it on what? our like a little short list for, for when we have something more visually appealing <laughs> <laughs> oh man U.S. base the second one. All right, cool, sweet. Oh man, I can't wait until I can, we can actually do conventions again. Kind of missing it a little bit. Yeah, I, I actually really loved like meeting people and having them play the game and uh, just chatting about that kind of stuff, and that was really fun. I mean, I also like just plain old go into conventions too, so. Like, PAX East is so close to us. Actually, like, pretty convenient. Someday. We'll, we'll get into PAX East. We'll do, we'll do it. I can hear Jason furiously calculating in his mind. I just... Ford has blocked me so effectively from... <laughs> The thing is, Jason, it looks like Paul has a lot less health than you right now, so I don't know how effectively that actually means. <laughs> Although you do have a fully, like, focused up Berserker uh, coming right at you with some decent attack bonus. So I think your Ranger is going to be effectively melted. Run out of time. All right. All right, let's see how much damage Paul can do with one attack. <laughs> oh, it's brutal. That's a deep cut too, so you're gonna have to do something with that bleed damage. Oh, 
Oh, wow. Here we go. I feel shenanigans are going to happen. I can feel the shenanigans from here. Yep, there we go. <laughs> it's Paul's time now. You came in with the confidence, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, he's got warrior after that, too. All these things happen in here. Gonna, he's gonna have to take out Ranger, I feel, because Ranger can do a real number on the rest of the team. Yeah, our, our Berserker little robot character's pretty cool. Ooh. I think, ouch. Was that for like. <laughs> Was that necessary? <laughs> I, I feel like. You could have easily done that with a bash. I feel like that could have been fine, but that was just for good measure. <laughs> <We're> just <flexing> here, just... <laughs> I don't need that health. Just secure the kill. God, keeps coming. He's getting a little bit of healing in too, so he's slowly getting out of range for some other stuff. Yeah, I, we, I, we do have, I, I like the new Berserker robot. Berserker is still, still a robo, but, um, they're gonna, they're, they're fun looking. I'll say that much. Ah, oh, brutal, brutal. <laughs> no. no matter what you do, you're gonna have to pay for it, so. I mean, I think there are ways around this, but... Okay, okay. I think that's worth it. I think that's totally worth it. Yeah, I don't know if that was helpful, but... I'm okay with that. <laughs> Yeah, lucky for you, you do have the Berserker around after this, so... Yeah, Trade Blows is not gonna... Well... No, Trade Blows is not gonna quite do it, so you're gonna have to do something a little bit longer turn. <laughs> yeah, mechs are cool. I got into a conversation not too long ago about uh, old old mech animes and stuff like that. And the first one was like, I don't understand how people like how many. It was it was something where there was an event going on and there was like, oh yeah, it was um uh the streamer that I was talking about. She sometimes streams for uh, Wasabi Anime, and um, she was talking about the uh, there was an event they were hosting, which was like like some kind of anniversary for Robotech. And she was like, I don't I don't even know what Robotech is. I don't know how many of these like robo nerds came out of the woodworks that actually like gave us a ton of views. <laughs> I'm like, Robotech's awesome. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> I've never really fully gotten into any mech property, I'd say. Robotech's weird because I believe what the deal is, Robotech's like the English anglicized version, I guess, of, of, I think it was three different mech series in Japan that they just kind of amalgamated the three of them together yeah, into like one storyline. Trademark disputes about stealing mech designs and stuff and that whole thing. I don't think, I no, because I think it was just repackaged. I don't think that was stealing. I think they just like repackaged it as one big storyline or something like that. I believe that's what the deal was. I I could be mistaken, um, but if you look it up, like it's like three different series in Japan, <laughs> and in and in like you know outside of Japan, it's just called Robotech, and it's like a completely different like storyline, I believe. But they like rehashed the footage in a way that like made it kind of work. I don't know. I always like like the old school, old school mech designs and stuff like that. They're so much fun.
But, uh, yeah, I don't, I haven't watched too, too much, like, mech stuff. Like, I watched a bit of, um, gosh, what's the, um, what's the Gundam where they, um, it's like a international competition or whatever. Can't remember. Is that Wing? I don't remember. There's so many Gundams and I haven't I mean, seen them. No, like, I haven't really sat down and watched, watched any of them. I think Wing is the one where it's like... Is it wing? Oh gosh, I'm gonna I'm gonna embarrass myself. No, I don't think it's wing. Gosh, which one is it? Oh no. <laughs> I think it's Mobile Fighter G? Oh no. Yeah, it's mobile. It's 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 G Gundam. Yeah, Mobile Fighter G Gundam. That's the one there. It's like an international kind of competition and stuff like that. That's very like it's very shonen. It's like they all have like secret moves and stuff like that, and it's fun. But it's cool though because it's got like the Pacific Rim style like people inside. They're like they're inside of the robots, but they're on like a like a. A platform and they move around and they like you know do like martial arts <laughs> inside of the Gundam basically and they're like hooked up it's, it's it's cool meanwhile Jason just barely hangs on for <laughs> for a second just about eking out a little bit more damage here I think you're saved because Paul does not have focus <laughs> that was tight though. Alright, Jason. You, you've proven yourself this week. <laughs> just hung on there just enough. Holy crap. That was brutal. That, that was so close. One health. If you didn't have that one health, I think I think Paul would have had it. I'm pretty sure. Oh, with a luck. A little luck. Double turn action, you mean? Um, well, I think he would have survived uh, at least one oh, attack oh, without from the, the warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof. That's, that was brutal. That was really good, though. It's all Berserker MVP for the most part. Yeah, I, warrior, felt, like I, yeah. I felt like I had to do a couple of... <laughs> all right, Paul. To remote, can we rewind to what Paul said at the beginning of this? <laughs> <laughs> but I think I was for, definitely forced to do a couple of things I really didn't want to do in that. Well, like, it sh it shows because the the health totals are so. Or, or, I mean, really, the one health on the berserker really sealed it, though. Would not have been able to get that tunnel vision in there. I think he would have been able to survive one more attack from, um, from the warrior. Yeah, what happened as well with the uh, trade blows? Was that? Oh yeah, Paul was that a mistake? I'm like, I'm pretty sure you could have done it without trade blows. That was just kind of flexing on Jason for the most part. I'm pretty sure you could have done enough damage to that ranger without having to use trade blows. <laughs> uh, was ranger? I don't think the ranger was evading, was it, Jason? Um, maybe, maybe so. Maybe that's what it was. Was it really? I'll I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, Paul. That would be a good justification, I suppose. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think it just yeah. came to a sequence at the end because you were left with a chemist without focus. If it had been Berserker instead, then I'd have lost there. Yeah, I think that might have been it. Yeah. Ooh. Dang. Yeah, that was really close. Good. All right, Jason. I'll leave you with your three and zero today. Undefeated champion. Yeah. Oh, unrelated. No, I'm I'm gonna announce my retirement from a uh, competitive. Oh no, no, man! What is this? Leaving on a high note. <laughs> He'll be back next week <laughs> or two weeks rather. <laughs> GG, GG's all. Yeah. Okay. I'll. Uh... <laughs> I I don't know what happened today. I made some uh, unsound strategic decisions. I think. <laughs>
But no, uh, really though, yeah, Jason, you really showed your mastery of the uh, of the techniques here. Oh man. Yeah, it worked out. I went pretty traditional with like team. I think so. Comp yeah. Like basic old school. I mean, Less things. Adding in Shio there really helps though, with um forcing people to. It, it's really awkward, isn't it? When you have a more um, populated battlefield, and, but also where, like, stacking up is, like, almost good to do. Mm. But, um, yeah, it's area control in this game is very important. So if you can get your opponent into a situation where they, like, have to stack up a certain way, but you can also punish that stack up, it, it gets it gets dull. Have I played Titanfall? No. I highly suggest everyone play Titanfall, though. <laughs> uh, I I have a feeling I would like Titanfall. Is Titanfall only for uh, PlayStation? Is that a PC? It's on Steam, I think. Is it really? I'm like... Titanfall. I mean, it's on the Source engine. Why would it? Why wouldn't it be on Steam? It's on Steam. Okay, cool. No, but I highly recommend everyone play Titanfall Two because he got um, Respawn Entertainment got really screwed uh, because I believe they released at the same time as one of the Battlefield games, mm. and um, I would say Titanfall Two is the more interesting uh, game <laughs> than Battlefield is. Um, it's actually a really good game, but everyone just played Battlefield because that's like it's really hard to compete with that. Um, but it's really cool. Titanfall is really cool, uh, with like calling in the mechs and stuff like that and like the movement in that game is spectacular. I've watched a, a few people play it, and I'm like, yep, that looks like a cool game. <laughs> a very cool game. Wait, Titanfall two is free? Wait, what are you talking about? Where? When? How? Yeah, it went free to play, or there's like a temporary, there's an event or something going on, isn't there? Oh, is there a Steam event right now for this? Oh, man. Oh, cool. Okay. I might play that. <laughs> I have I have some things going on this weekend, but I'll see if I can play a few hours of it or something. Man, it's a cool game. I would love to make a game like that. It's just, it's so interesting. Yeah, the level design is cool because there's a lot of like um uh there's a lot of like uh interesting ways to uh reverse the environment. I believe there's like a grappling hook thing and there's some like sliding things and there's like some verticality too because of the the mechs and stuff like that. It's cool. It is kind of a it's a shame that uh they didn't get as many sales as but critically uh, it, it's critically acclaimed. Like it's it's ten out of ten on Steam. Like it's it. Everybody likes this game, but not everybody has played it. Uh, but we need to bring back Armored Core. <laughs> we need to bring back Armored Core, and we also need to bring back um. Gosh, what's the name of that uh game that came out for original Xbox? Do you know what I'm talking about, Jason? No, no, I don't. Oh gosh, what is it? Uh, hold on. Six bucks. Heck, Steel Battalion. That's the one. There's one reason. One reason why Steel Battalion needs to come back. And this is why. This this right here. Uh-huh. That. That made Steel Battalion amazing. <laughs> uh at PAX East I almost got to play a uh sixteen player free for all with this. Um I've played some of the little pod arcade pod type mech games which are pretty fun. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um 
but I wish they, I, man, this would never fly in today's market, but I, I would try to make a way to buy those. <laughs> there's a, there's a place in Massachusetts that has, um, uh, an Xbox and a full copy of this that I was very seriously considering acquiring because this is just like my dream. <laughs> <laughs> Dual joystick mech, mech game. Oh my gosh. So cool. But yeah, at PAX East, they had, um, they had 16 Xboxes networked together with 16 of these uh, ridiculous controllers. And everyone was playing free for all. It was very cool. But I ran out of time. I couldn't quite do it. I had like a, a meeting to get to or something like that. Um, but I watched them play it for a while. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that's that's so that's so amazing. Um, yeah, mech stuff is mech stuff is great. <laughs> Almost as good as uh space cowboy themed stuff. Like, Almost. That's like my favorite my favorite theming. Space truckers. Pretty much Cowboys. the same. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna, that, yep. Space trucking is like I don't know if I could if I could like if I had like if someone gave me a budget just like I don't know who would do that but <laughs> if I had if I had the opportunity to make one game I would make I, don't know, I would I would make a space trucking game that would that would just I don't know I I think that's like a huge apt thing there have been space trucking games there's at least like one that I can think of there have been there's quite a few like once you get into that you got like I don't know what counts as space trucking, but you've got like, you know, like sandboxy space things. You've got like escape velocity, Nova, and all of those, all of the old uh, like freelancer and all of those. Yeah, those I types. guess freelancer counts. Um, it's either that or um, gosh, what is it? Um, I would like to make one of those. Those. Series. I would. I would love to make a new wing commander. Um like a wing commander game that would be amazing I mean, I guess that's Star Citizen, right <laughs> yeah but no 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 we're not we don't talk about star citizen here <laughs> <laughs> not a game not a game star citizen it's a dream. is not a game it's not a dream either it's like development nightmare um there's if you have the opportunity to actually there's a like there's like an hour and a half video on youtube about the history of star citizen um there's like some kind of deep dive i think it's called like deep dive. Uh, and it's just about all the weird things that have happened in the past x amount of years with that game it's yeah. bizarre how about elite dangerous like that's a bit more tangible i own elite it. dangerous i have never played it actually i bought it like way back when it came out and for some reason i just never played it i feel like with that kind of game i would really want to use a joystick to play that um yeah or even better, they have dual joystick support, uh, which is amazing. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's 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 my thing. Um, I told you that I recently found a, a a a alpha build of a Babylon Five Starfighter game, right? I think it may have come up. Yeah, yeah, that that was cool. I just want to make a Babylon Five game. That's what I want. <laughs> I want to I want to like take like all the interesting stuff from what they stole from Babylon 5 with Mass Effect and focus on that and instead of like on the ground shooty fighting I want to do um like starship fighting and stuff like that but with all like of the um like intergalactic politics and stuff like that too uh, that's amazing <laughs> it's the coolest thing yeah I, I think It'd I would be... want to run an RPG with that first like a run like a tabletop with it yeah to like flesh oh, out things yeah. I've, I've done that. I've done that whole premise, like space truckers and stuff. It's pretty cool. Oh, it's so cool. I, I, I love that. Villainy. If you're aware of that one. Yeah, yeah, I think you've recommended that to me. And like, if I actually pop up my, my display capture, let's see. Uh, where is it? Uh, oh, no, it went away. Can't see it now. No. Where is it? Nope, one more. One more bookmark. Oh, why why won't you let me do one more bookmark? There it is. It's uh it's there. <laughs> it it's it's on my bookmark. <laughs> we will get this government villain villainy eventually. Um, I actually wrote one as well. I wrote a tabletop a little mini tabletop. You did! There. I remember that. I remember you doing that. Oh man. 
that's playable i ran that for a few months yeah i think i'm gonna do that after uh the one shop that we're hopefully gonna finish up at some once we actually get people to sit down again to do it but. anyway all right we have we have we have chatted about random stuff for <laughs> for yes. way too long <laughs> we should probably we should probably call it here um uh thank you thank you rabbit for for showing up and for chatting for the many kind words um mm -hmm. and also thank you for pointing us to a couple of those um very cool um indie supporters um we will check them out definitely um once we have something really really nice to show yeah oh paul don't confuse babylon 5 with fifth element although i'd really do like fifth element as well fifth element is a great film for what it is just a perfect example of that type of film i love it yep. um but yeah, ah, I'm gonna stop talking about space stuff. <laughs> it's like, oh uh, man. Anyway, all right, uh, we're gonna call it here, and uh, in a couple of weeks we will have some new content for everybody, and then we'll chat about that here as we always do. So, until cool. next time, uh, see you later. Take care, everyone.